Hey, I'm your host, George Payne, and welcome to Build Up Africa, a podcast brought to you by Adiverse in which we explore the rapidly developing African tech landscape with a focus on Web3, entrepreneurship, and investing. You can listen to Build Up Africa on YouTube, Medium, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. What Sesso is doing is building the trust layer for the real estate market where more things can be built on top of it. In The Wealth of Nations, a book often considered one of the most important literary works of Western economic thought, Adam Smith proposes that one of the most critical aspects of wealth creation is land ownership. It's this ownership that forms the bedrock of market, commerce, macroeconomies. It thus tracks that the tokenization of real estate is something that many blockchain entrepreneurs have attempted to do over the past few years, but product market fit has often eluded them, largely because of regulatory technological and market adoption hurdles. But Africa presents a unique opportunity to scale the tokenization of real estate. In fact, this application of the technology is proving popular amongst a wide range of stakeholders because of the implications for land registry, lowering the barrier to entry for owning real estate and opening up the African real estate market to a broader range of international investors. For people who don't know, the real estate markets across Africa are really booming right now and a lot of it's driven by you know, this investment from the diaspora communities. Today, we're speaking to Daniel Block, co-founder and CEO of Sesso Global, a company building core infrastructure to not only enable the tokenization of real estate, but to enhance land registry and facilitate the development and expansion of the African real estate market. All right, great. So, uh, pleasure to be on the podcast. Uh, my name is Daniel Block. I'm the CEO of Sesso Global. And so, a little background myself. I'm originally from the U.S., uh, I've been working in the, the blockchain space since 2011. A um, little background on, on that end is um, I, with some friends, was a part of uh, setting up one of the first uh, Bitcoin exchanges in the U.S., uh, Bitbox, which was uh, set up in, in 2011. Um, from there, uh, it was actually uh, Tim Draper's first investment into crypto uh, as part of the, uh, uh, his son's Boost VC accelerator in, in 2013. I um, was really excited, you know, uh, this was when I was in university, like the first time really meeting like, you know, entrepreneurs, people trying, you know, different things very early in the Bitcoin, uh, you know, uh, 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 era. And I had a friend that used to, you know, go around our house saying that everyone buy Bitcoin, it's going to be worth a thousand dollars one day. And, um, and so really just love like the energy and the aspects of also making, uh, you know, ma- making your own money by contributing to the system. So. I got active in, in mining, set up mining pools, and started a meetup group uh, where I went to school at University of Michigan. Uh, in 2013, you know, started hearing about different meetup groups and connected with guys in uh, Stanford, uh, a guy named Ryan Breslow, who's now the founder of Bolt, who had a crypto, a Bitcoin club at Stanford, and a couple guys at MIT who had Bitcoin clubs. I was trying to make a network to connect them, uh, you know, kind of a a repository of, um, of info around the blockchain that will allow people to set up uh, clubs at their university. It was called then the College Cryptocurrency Network. Um, it's still around today on, I think it's uh, it's six uh, student leader, uh, which is now called the Blockchain Education Network. And so we did is it was really amazing. I think it just showed the whole decentralization of the blockchain ecosystem and network at that time where we had a really just at that point a repository on Google Drive and allowing people uh, a setup to create their own clubs. And from the three original clubs, we had over 100 uh, uh, Bitcoin clubs at universities join, first in the U.S., then Canada, then South America, Europe, and eventually we had schools join from, uh, from Ghana in, 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 in Kenya. Uh, this was really my first exposure to what was happening uh, in, in the continent in the tech space around uh, 2013 and it was my first time hearing about mobile money a lot of innovations that you know this is like before venmo and paypal in america i think really got big and so hearing about mobile money transfers and different things happening in the tech space you know myself personally found it very exciting and within the within the organization we were uh, investigating a lot of different uh ideas that blockchain could be applied to especially beyond uh crypto you know at that point and um, there's a very early video that came out by a company called Factum, which is kind of early, like early company in the uh, Web3 space. Um, and, and they had a video around how blockchain could use, be used for land registry. And it was a very exciting video and talking about the opportunities and, and really based on Hernando de Sotis' uh, 
the mystery of capital that you can provide these uh, you know, titles and verification of the titles, you can unlock the trap capital in the land that he estimated was over $9 trillion. And uh, we're doing some different work with the groups in Ghana uh, that, we, that were networked through the club. And uh, fortunately, I got a grant from the Bill and the Gates Foundation in 2014 to trial out uh, a product around a blockchain-based land registry. And uh, through the networks, we're able to get a, a, do a pilot with the, the Ghana Lands Commission. And, and I guess we can go more to it, but, you know, that was really what kind of really boosted me into the space. And, um, you know, of course, like most products, your idea for how it would work at the beginning is, is so far off or maybe how it will actually be implemented on the ground. And so kind of with that, um, you know, I, I moved to uh, did my first trip. Uh, to Ghana and, and started building out what has become Sesto to date. So, um, you know, beyond that, you know, I studied actually uh, more on the agri agriculture uh, in school. I was doing fish farming, my other passion and, and that end. Um, but, you know, really just seeing in the early days, like the, not just like the, you know, the opportunity in crypto, I also think the, the community behind it, you know, it was definitely, I felt very clear it was, uh, you know, a train that you had to be on, you know, can only, can only be going forward. So that's a, you know, a bit about me and I'm currently uh, based in, uh, in Durban, in South Africa, where we're continuing to expand the, uh, the solution. Was being on the ground in Africa and being exposed to the early blockchain market a key part of your decision to build with the technology? Yeah, well, I think it was it was a key uh, a key part of it. You know, um, you know, I was we were looking at you know other uh, you know solutions. At the time, I was doing some work, as I mentioned, to in, with an exchange. I was doing work in the um, around uh, mining as well. But really, you know, I, I felt very passionate about you know blockchain to be used really within this uh, you know really um, social change and uh, you know really you know industry impacting. You know, I was really I think tied to the uh, the, the land rights you know aspect and really got got you know, interested in, in this aspect around land registries and of course we still have not seen it really push it out to date and you know I, I think like anything I think for someone um, you know, is not from, uh, from from Africa not from you know, especially from you know, West Africa where I've done most of my work got in Nigeria and I think a lot of us who you know who, who go especially you know, to look at tech opportunities you know, it's amazing you know how great the opportunities are. I think the willingness to adopt and trial new solutions as well. So I really think, yeah, this boost of going there um, and, uh, you know, and, and piloting on the ground really was the inspiration. You know, I, I don't think without the grant, I probably would not have been propelled to actually to move there and really put that, the time, uh, you know, on, on, and have the opportunity, I would say, more to be on the ground. So you've taken us through the journey into Africa and the beginnings of Sasso. For the purpose of the listeners here today, what actually is Sasso doing? What caused the tipping over to create something like Sasso, a particular market? Yeah, definitely. So um, Sasso is a one-stop shop for property management and transactions. We, we say we're building uh, the Zillow of Africa and the first verified property uh, marketplace. So it's really a, a two-part solution. It's uh, we have our a, a proprietary custom-built CRM, so a management app to manage uh, properties, to manage all the property documentation, the titles, uh, the property, uh, the building plans, all necessary documentation with the properties, um, and building out a digital registry of uh, of verified properties. And then from the CRM, we have our marketplace at Sesso.Global. It's a website and mobile app where you can find verified properties. Uh, and easily transact. So you can do verification on them. You can request a mortgage uh, and request a purchase. So really what we're trying to do is make purchasing and investing in real estate uh, in Africa simple and secure. And long-term what we see we're building as a platform is digitizing the property registry through transactions. And the reason why we jump from this, uh, this original work around blockchain land registry is into uh, you know, this kind of one-stop shop for management and sales is um, what we saw is the initial work where we did from uh, with the with the grant, the research project with the government was really around, uh, and this is, we've seen projects around the world kind of similar around working with governments to create a blockchain land registry. There's been Chrome Away in Sweden, right, Bitfury in Georgia. There's been the consensus project in Dubai. 
and others throughout the world that have tried this, but really what we see is right, firstly, is that one, the government is really, is a centralized system, the land registry. So kind of like any blockchain solution, if one party is verifying the documents onto the blockchain, there's still a lot of areas where things could um, could go, you know, the wrong way. There was a, a project of digitization that's very well uh, documented in the, in, the, in, the, in Central America, where post-digitization, what they found is that all of the beachfront pretty much was owned by the politicians. And this kind of shows uh, situations where this movement, oftentimes digitization and centralized approach can come with a lot of issues. Uh, number two, a lot of the land registry issues kind of are counter uh, towards uh, how land, so land registry is a blockchain. Some issues, they can really be uh, encounter of each other in the sense of aspects like imminent domain. So what if you have your property you know, on the blockchain, but most governments in the world have imminent domain where they can change the registry themselves. So even in that aspect, some aspect, some parts of the land registry in general are not permanent. And, you know, those need to be updated and there needs to be mechanisms for that. And lastly, if we look at why governments are trying to digitize land registries, the general thought is that once you digitize the land registry, it'd be easier to buy properties and easy to get mortgages. But we found on the ground is that that's really not so you know, accurate. It's a bit of an incomplete story because you don't buy a land title, right? You buy a, a, a property. You don't mortgage a land title. You mortgage the property. And so you have issues of, we see in Langos where properties have good title, but they then, uh, you know, they collapse. You have collapsed buildings. Nothing about the land title is going to tell you about these aspects. So really realize we need to go a bit deeper and really, like, bring in the full ecosystem uh, in the real estate market onto the blockchain. So this includes the lawyers that are doing the verifications, the property developers, who are uh, building the properties, the buyers, the government, of course, to verify the title, but that's one verification of you know, many other stakeholders within the real estate space. Um, and I'll use this example as well. If we look globally around land registries, America is a paper land registry. You know, UK is a paper land registry. And so it's kind of crazy that with the, the with a lot of the DFI funding, the World Bank, others, uh, there's such an initiative that to fix the real estate market in Africa, we need to digitize the land registry. But then you think about it and you're like, but no one else has, has, has done it like this. And they have functioning, you know, real estate markets in these countries. And so what we feel is that what SESO is doing is building this, the groundwork, you know, the, 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 the trust layer for the real estate market where more things can be built on top of it. And we hope long term what we're building with the property developers and the real estate uh, and the ecosystem is that we're building a trust, uh, a, a, a trusted, a verifiable property and transactable registry, which could serve as the basis of a government registry or a traditional registry, which we're now doing with uh, several chiefs in Ghana, for instance, who are using SESO to manage their overall registries. But what we want to do is start with more of a holistic approach of bringing the whole real estate industry onto a platform where we can verify properties and see the transaction from end to end, from uh, registry uploading all the way to transaction and uh, in, in title changes. What have been some of the most pressing problems when it comes to implementing something like this in Africa, which is what you said, there's problems in set up an infrastructure that doesn't necessarily exist in places like the US and the UK. Totally. And so... Um, so I think the challenges, I would say, firstly, are also opportunities. And I think we all agree that there's such amazing you know, opportunities in, in Africa and emerging markets in general. And, you know, I, maybe it's, it's overexpressed, but, you know, I really you know, believe of the leapfrog effect where a lot of what we you know, think people are building, the entrepreneurs in Africa are building, are really going to set up basis of systems that are more advanced and uh, more transparent and trusted than what has been built in the West. And so, you know, a lot of the issue, of course, has been, building out the registry and so the the really tough part at the beginning was kind of building the confidence for people to list with us to go door to door and get developers to agree to this platform to give us all their documents there's even you can imagine right a, a a risk of why do you want our title documents are you going to try to do fraud on, on our behalf why do we you know this as a new approach why do people you know why do we need this um in that end and so kind of understanding explaining of course because at the beginning we, we sell the dream where we're gonna have all these properties have all this you know build this huge registry people will buy but when we're starting we were just at the very beginning so we had to kind of sell the vision for the future and so i think it took a lot of time to get you know developers real estate developers right to agree to list on the platform and it was really slow in the beginning and really took a lot of grind work 
a lot of the thing we wanted was real was banks to then believe in this system and offer mortgages to properties that were verified through this SO platform. And again, that took us a while to get this mass of developers that really even got the banks interested of coming on board. And you know, we're, we're thankful now we've been able to secure our first lending partner and we have several other big banks in the pipeline that are gonna be lending based on the developers that we've done this verification process. So it really took a long time, I think, to get mass uh, on there. And so we now have around 135 developers on the platform, around 12,000 individual units. But that was over several years and a lot of you know, trials uh, of getting there. So I would say that was definitely, I think, maybe you know, the difficult, the more difficult side. But I would say on the more on the on the positive side, we're looking at that is that you know I do think right in, in in markets that are as I mentioned, like in U.S., U.K., even South Africa, where the real estate is still documents are still in paper and the registries are still in paper, but the market works. There's not this lack, I think, of trust that there is, say, in Ghana and Nigeria, and so. A lot of these systems will probably stay in paper for a long time. And so I would say on the positive side, there are a lot of developers that do recognize this issue, right? The real estate developers, I would say, is that you know we do realize that people think that all developers are, fr are doing fraud, that you know they need this extra trust, especially among buyers in the diaspora. And so I think especially as we got momentum and especially we were able to get the opportunity to sit down, a lot of those being able to get those meetings and, and, and keep you know, pushing for the people to, to meet with us and understand what we're offering. And, but I do think people understood the problem, which was a benefit. They knew that there was a lack of trust. They knew people do not trust the land registry and, and the verification of properties in general. So there's at least kind of that belief, right, in, in, in the product. And, and for now, what we're trying to do is now build trust, not among the developers, which I think we've done a great job with, is now you know, reaching out to the buyers and selling them there is this platform that has been built, you know, that has this, you know, registry that's being set up. And I think we get a lot of support, you know, um, for that, for being able to have built this. So, you know, I would say, you know, when it comes to whether you're putting exactly trying to build a, a real estate registry or a school certificate registry or so many other things that I think, you know, the blockchain is going to have impact on, you know, I think getting that initial, you know, build it and buy into the platform, you know, can be, of course, a bit, you know, a, a bit of effort. So in our previous conversations, talked about also where you see a lot of the users of the platform coming from, you know, members of the diaspora who are across the world, plugging money back into the continent. Can you speak more to sort of that angle and that opportunity, given that a lot of people want to sort of see Africa as a really interesting investment opportunity now and real estate being kind of critical to that uh, when it comes to sort of ownership and you know, even um, Adam Smith talks about ownership and the, the critical role that it plays in economic development and prosperity. So are you seeing that movement now with uh, in demand from members of diaspora? Yeah. So I think great question. And, and that is an aspect that is, is booming. For people who don't know, the real estate markets across Africa are really booming right now. And a lot of it's driven by, you know, this investment from the diaspora communities. Uh, quick, you know, high level stat is that it's uh, around 45 billion is remitted to Africa every year. Uh, around half of that goes to Nigeria. And uh, number two is, is Ghana. And CDC um, did a report that estimates that 30% of this uh, remittance is going towards real estate. So we're looking at around $15 billion every year coming, you know, from the diaspora, you know, into uh, purchasing real estate. And also inter Africa, you know, there's a lot of real estate, you know, South Africans, you know, buying in Zimbabwe, Nigerians buying in Ghana. So you also see a lot of growth inter Africa real estate investments. Ghana is, is, is really taking off in the real estate sector right now, kind of driven by the tourism boom um, that was kind of brought on by the year of return in 2019, where I think we've talked about how the president of Ghana invited, you know, especially the black diaspora globally to come to Ghana and see what's happening and have a pathway to residency and citizenship. And so Airbnb had told us uh, that last year that Ghana was their fastest growing market in the entire world. Accra uh, was the fastest growing market. And you look at real estate, uh, you know, uh, returns in Ghana, you know, you can have annualized returns on the on the assets of over 20 percent rental incomes between eight and 12 percent. So this really, you know, is, is, is a really attractive market, not just for those uh, you know looking to move back, but also those who are looking for an investment that has both a uh, an economic return, but also a social return, which is I definitely see you know that as well, where people feel like they are actually actively a part of building, you know, the new Accra, the new Lagos, uh, the new Nairobi, right, et cetera. And so 
we see a lot of growth uh, happening uh, from the diaspora and, and for our platform that uh, really the key aspect is providing this trust and transparency and simplicity in the purchasing. We do get a lot of interest. Most of our clients right now are from the diaspora who are looking for this trust uh, system and assistance to help them uh, buy. And a lot of people who are buying from us, you know, and we see not just from us in general, are people who maybe have never even been to Ghana or are coming for the first time. People in Nigeria who haven't been back in, in many years, you know, who are now seeing the, especially uh, the tech boom as well, all this happening in the fintech space and very excited about, you know, what can be done there. So even on the theme of, of this coming back, we launched a real estate investment tour, an eight day trip where people can come. We partnered with a very notable uh, um, tourism company called Land Tours, it's been around for 30 years doing trips around West Africa. So half the tour is, um, is real estate and the other half is tourism. So people who are wanting to come and have a holiday, but also look at investments. And we have over a hundred people booked on these tours for the next year, just completed our first one. And so it just shows this like this growing demand. And so I do think there's a, it's a very exciting time. And you know, people realize that no matter what you do, you need housing. Uh, we have a large housing shortage across Africa and there's a lot of space and land available. And so when we look at, you mentioned something we're doing with some of the traditional chiefs as well. We look at those who are the indigenous landholders as well. You know, most of them are, you know, have, uh, you are very rich in land and that end, but you know, what they don't have is the capital to develop. And so I think what we see more and more is also joint ventures, developers coming from other countries, partnering with local people, not really, you know, I think in a much more fair and equitable way, equitable way through these joint ventures where they own the project or directly with the local owners. So we're also seeing that people coming to build their own developments. And so, you know, very excited on what's happening on the ground. I think a lot of it is, uh, you know, you know, like, you know, really being, um, you know, backed by this growth of diaspora investments, the growth of tourism. And, you know, even there was a great Good Morning America to the thing of that, you know, how the, they call it the Black Panther effect, you know, that people seeing, you know, what, what Africa really has to offer, which is so much in, in terms of culture, uh, unique experiences, you know, the nature. And so we only think, you know, things are growing. I always say that this is the real estate, is, uh, the real estate is booming in spite of so many things, in spite of there's no mortgages, you have to buy 100% in cash. And so, you know, I definitely think that, you know, as, as products come to market, which there's many people working on these different aspects in the real estate market, it's only going to get more affordable and easier to invest. What's been your experience participating in the Adiverse program over the last few months in terms of like product development operationally? Where have you seen this sort of development take place with you guys? Yeah, so great question. So um, we're very excited about Adiverse and I would say we're very passionate just about Africa venture capital, especially in the prop tech in, uh, in Web3 sector as a whole. Myself and the team, we've hosted several blockchain hackathons in Ghana and in Nigeria as we started our company just to get the community together and you know bring, put our names out there. Uh, we've hosted several prop tech pitch events. Um, and, and I think FinTech is really growing on the continent, but other industries are, are still kind of slowly going behind. And so I would firstly would say that you know, I, I commend any, any group bringing venture capital into Africa and being active on investments. But you know, I think for us, you know, we've been uh, working on CESA for the past you know, over four years is in that I think what Adiverse is bringing that's been amazing in the program is not just investment, but also, you know, things like we're doing here on the podcast, the support and the network beyond it, which I think a lot of startups like ours and others uh, need that additional mentoring, both on the tech sector. And so I think what Adiverse has done with this helping people grow on the Cardano blockchain and this Web3 development in general, you know, is, is creating a new generation of Web3 engineers on the continent that are going to be building indigenous solutions. I think growing the network and growing the connections on the business side and on the networking side is really helping to bring more people in. So I think Adiverse's approach in the program of not just the capital, but bringing in especially the tech development, the network development, it is essential, right? And what needs, what we need more of. And I'm not the knock on any other funds. I also think it's just the capacity of some other funds is that they don't have the, the, the network themselves potentially or the manpower to do that. So, you know, I think what Adamers is doing is we could say laying down the groundwork for like the growth in Web3, which is, uh, and I think everyone agrees globally, 
that Africa is going to be a, a, a hub in the heart of, you know, uh, Web3 development. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's always interesting when you're speaking to people who are not necessarily in Africa to kind of emphasize and, and, and highlight how it is the most important economy of the next 50 years. Just statistically, if you look at, you know, population growth rates, and I think what's specifically interesting about SAIS and what you guys are doing is that so critical to this is ownership of land and structuring that in a way that is conducive to economic growth. And I think that, you know, adding transparency to it, adding functionality and tooling so it can be connected to modern infrastructure, which, as you mentioned, like we're after you see a lot of leapfrogging into. So it's not just about having a, a, a real estate platform. It's much more about creating this fabric for economic growth by having real estate ownership. One thing it would interesting to get your perspective on is, is the Cardano blockchain and building on Cardano. Um, do you have any sort of thoughts or insight of doing that as you guys have progressed into that? Yeah. So, um, it, you know, it's been a good experience. Uh, uh, working on uh, on Cardano and actually just internally with our dev team, I think they've, uh, you know, I do think it's important in Africa that one, I think most people are building on ETH, be, on, on Ethereum, because that's what they've had experience with. That's who's invested in the hackathons and the, uh, you know, the events and the training. And so firstly, I think it's uh, it's been a great experience, like being able with our tech team to grow the skills. And I think uh, the team has, has really, you know, enjoyed, you know, working with the Cardano uh the tech team as well and building on that. Um, I think one aspect that's very exciting is that Cardano is still in the early phases is what we see is that, and that our devs, you know, I think in the groups that we've spoken with in Adverse, see opportunity to influence, you know, Cardano and the development as well. So, you know, I know uh, Charles had said that he thinks Africa is the most important place for, for blockchain or one up. And so I do think maybe that, you know, one aspect I see with Cardano is that, it could also be influenced for Africa as more Africans are building on it and we build on that. And I think that that's an exciting aspect where Cardano is a major blockchain, but there's still a lot of, you know, uh, uh, research and development going into it as well. So I think, you know, that's been, you know, quite exciting to see. And I think the other aspects, you know, is that, you know, seeing, uh, you know, the push from Cardano. And I think that this is what we're looking at of how uh, Sesso can maybe be uh, leading on the land registry space to look at use cases, right, beyond just, uh, you know, uh, financial ones. And so I know there was the project in Ethiopia with the, uh, the, the, the school certificates, you know, and that end. And many different blockchains have looked at this use case of, and land titles and registry in that end. We think Cardano could be, uh, you know, a very strong platform for it. And that potentially, right, with, uh, with maybe the development plan of Cardano and those, you know, the, putting work behind it, it could be influenced to be more friendly for these use cases that will have, like you're saying, structural, uh, you know, changes and, and benefits to the economy, right? Not just building, you know, apps that are going to increase sales and you know, reps, but also creating, you know, fundamental systems um, that, uh, you know, will really transform society. And so, you know, excited about, you know, I think looking at Cardano and that end, I think that's been a key aspect to our devs and, and growing the Web3 uh, aspect as well. So I just note in general that, Right over the years, and I know blockchain in general, we've only been around, you know, 2008. And so, but of course, you know, there's been a lot of, you know, pies in the skies of, you know, looking at how blockchain is going to solve so many aspects, or at least be incorporated into a lot of solutions. Of course, right, we're still in very much in the pilot phase and that end. Um, but as I was saying, with the work I think Adiverse is doing in Cardano, I think, you know, in Africa, right, we see a lot of people solving, you know, key issues. And as I was saying, our whole team, for the most part, our software team are based in Ghana. And I always find very interesting that when we build out the solutions, when it comes to land being defrauded for a land or having, you know, title issues, most of our team have faced those issues, right? And so a lot of people are building, well, I always think it's very exciting about, you know, the entrepreneurship space across Africa and what also, you know, he, you know putting that together with Web3 in Africa, a lot of people are building solutions that will change their own personal lives, that they're living here on the ground. And so there's kind of, I think, that motivation of, and I always think in any Web3 conference, especially, you know, of course, the blockchain space in general, we're all pretty optimistic and trying to build big things uh, for the future. But I do think within Africa, within this cohort that we're all building together on Cardano, there's a thought of really building uh, uh, products that will have this uh, you know, societal impact. So what does the next six months to the year look like for, for you guys at CESA? Yeah, so we have an exciting uh, next six months. So we're rolling out um, a few new products. So, um, so as as I mentioned, our, our, what are we have two part solutions? The CRM, which manages the documentation 
and um, um, the, the the properties and, 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 the, and the aspects there. And then once verified, it goes to our marketplace. So we've just signed an exciting partnership with the Ga Dangbe Land Administration. It's the traditional rulers of Accra. Uh, they manage over 26,000 acres of land. Uh, right now, mostly in Excel and on paper, uh, we'll be uh, rolling out our, our CRM solution with them that will be utilized for their own digital land registry uh, on Cardano, which will bring a lot of active land onto the market, which will make it easier uh, for these traditional rulers to sell uh, sell land, do joint ventures, bring more development into Ghana, which we think is going to be a game changer, and also a game changer for how we think globally how traditional rulers and indigenous leaders can manage their land in a digital uh, fashion. So we're very excited about that. We've just launched on the sales side our first uh, mortgage product. Uh, so it's a, it's a mortgage solution within the Seso app on Seso.global. Uh, you can go in and apply for a mortgage. We have multiple banks now on the platform. We'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll uh, take the mortgage applications. Uh, offering will be the lowest rates on the market for Ghana and then scaling out uh, beyond that. So, and then you're going to see Sesso doing a lot more events abroad. So we have uh, several events lined up uh, across England, uh, London, uh, Milton Keynes, um, and a few others. We'll be doing meetups in New York, Canada, Texas, you know, really to get meet our, our clients where they're at, create this connection, uh, you know, from the platform, uh, you know, into investment into Africa. So. We're very excited, you know, about the future, which is really going to be focused around bringing more properties onto the platform to, be, to get verified, digitized, as we said, build the digital land registry through transactions and through, um, through uh, you know, the, 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 the platform and then, you know, making it easier through the mortgages and other solutions to purchase. And I was, as I said before, it's not a, it's, it cannot be a better time than maybe yesterday to buy and invest in property. Uh, in Africa, and so we all think it's only going to grow this December. Ghana is expecting a million tourists, which is really exciting, um, and so only going to see uh, these markets grow. So very excited about the next six months and working together with with Adiverse, um to bring the uh, you know the land registry tool, especially uh, into into full force. And we truly think that you know we want this to be, as I mentioned, Sesto is a platform. You know, to really, you know, to scale out here, to see the success that what we're doing in Ghana and Nigeria and scale this throughout Africa, uh, in the world as a whole. So we think the next six months are being exciting for the launch of solutions and, and really show the, the power and the, the, the usability of what we've, uh, what we've created. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Build Up Africa. If you'd like to learn more about Adiverse, please head over to adiverse.co. If you'd like to pitch for investment, please email a copy of your pitch deck, as well as an overview of your company to pitch at adiverse.co. You can listen to Build Up Africa on YouTube, Medium, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. See you guys next time.